In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at Magic Bullet Looks directly inside of Cinema 4D. Now, uh, Magic Bullet Looks is also a plugin you can use in After Effects, I think even Premiere, maybe even Resolve, uh, but it's nice that we have it available to us in Cinema 4D if we want to do some quick you know, compositing-ish type effects, color correction, stylization, maybe even grading directly in Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's see how we can get an image into Magic Bullet Looks. Um, so there's a few different ways you can do that depending on where you're at in your user interface. If you're in your perspective view, your Redshift render view, even in your picture viewer. So um, first thing is, if you were to just come up here to the view menu, and if you've seen this send to Magic Bullet Looks, it's actually going to send your perspective view in there. And that may not be what you would like. Uh, even if you were using the Redshift IPR, and you were to choose that same send a magic bullet looks, it will send your perspective view in there. So I do feel like that's a little bit misleading. Thankfully though, what we can do is choose to send this image to our picture viewer. And whether you get an image from that way into the picture viewer or just rendering directly into the picture viewer, from there what you can do is choose file, send it to magic bullet looks. And this is great because you can open up previous renders, animations, stills, whatever, and then use Magic Bolt looks in them um, from Cinema 4D and not have to worry about um, After Effects, even though as I'll probably mention once or twice, that is typically where I would use Magic Bullet looks. Now, if you're using your Redshift render view, let me toggle off my um, perspective view in order to get something rendering in here. Uh, you can open up your settings and from there, toggle on Magic Bullet looks and then directly choose the open Magic Bullet looks and that image gets pulled in right away. So you don't have to do the, the in-between with the picture viewer. Now, um, the way Magic Bullet looks is set up, there's a number of different panels you can open and close. I currently have the looks panel open, which you can toggle on or off by just clicking on it. You can do the same thing with tools. And if it's off and you go over it, uh, hover over it, it will open it up so you can find something. And then, you know, in theory should go away if you kind of click off or go to a different area. You also have different scopes if you care about that information. Um, and lastly, we kind of have the the look we're building and information about it here. Uh, we'll talk more about that, but I also wanna point out you do have options for input and output, different color modes, color spaces, if you are concerned about that. So my typical kind of workflow here is to find a preset I like, and I primarily use Blockbuster Cool, Blockbuster Warm, and Indie. However, there's plenty of other good options in the other categories as well. And what you'll see is each one is made up, each preset is made up of individual tools here that you can then come in, make adjustments to delete tools out, add new ones. So for instance, we have our diffusion tool in here, which just kind of softens things up a little bit. You can see I can toggle that off in the top right here. And if you want to delete it, you can just select and hit the delete key. For something like this vignette, I can adjust the circle or its kind of area of influence, adjust its strength, right? And just get a sense of what it's doing. And that's typically how I would start here. It's kind of experimenting, seeing what each tool does. So you get a little bit of an idea of what um, you can build with these tools. Chromatic aberration, kind of a camera based effect. If I zoom in really closely here, you'll see how the image is being separated into its red and cyan channels um, because of the, the values up here. So you can make that more or less negative. You could also do it, you know, green, magenta, all that type of stuff. So can just set this back to, I don't know if it was positive 0.5 or negative, shouldn't make a huge difference. But yeah, and I'm just mouse wheeling in here to zoom in and out. Colorista, really important um, tool we have because it's a lot of color correction um, effects all in one. Uh, now in After Effects, Colorista is its own effect you can add, but it's nice that we can work with it in Magic Bolt Looks along with several other things. That way, all of these tools are in one place. Unlike in After Effects where you may have to use several adjustment layers or stack multiple effects, and it can be hard to find exactly what is causing what here. Very easy to come in, toggle things on and off, um, and kind of go from there. So Colorista, you can adjust 
how bright or dark your shadows, midtones, highlights are. You can adjust the colors of them by playing around with our options here. Very common controls, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, some hue and saturation adjustments, and even curves. I should also point out you can use multiple effects, uh, though um, I do think that can maybe get a bit confusing if we're just getting started here. I do think film grain, it, uh, and tools like it are very important. You'll notice we have a whole film section here with different kind of grain noise options. And this can be a great way to make things feel a little bit more film-like because in general, I do feel like Magic Bolt Looks does make our animations, images, renders, whatever, uh, much more cinematic, kind of punch up so the, the contrast, so to speak. Um, and it does a pretty good job at um, stylizing and, and doing some color grading as well but film grain i like to use it for for two different purposes one because i do think it can you know help things seem a little bit more film like by adding in that film grain but also if we do have a noisy render adding film grain on top of it can help kind of even it out and fill it in and, and oftentimes hide the kind of crawling um, movement you get with noise in an animation. So something like this can help cover it up though. Still not a replacement for doing clean um, renders. Okay. So lots of other really cool, useful tools here. I like edge softness. Um, I think that can be really useful for, you know, adding some blurs, you know, keep in mind though, this is magic bullet looks we're applying all these effects to every part of our image. Unlike if we're something in After Effects and doing some more advanced compositing um, where you know you can use puzzle mats, crypto mats um, to apply effects to different parts of our image. Uh, now, typically I would use something like Magic Bullet Looks in After Effects. Um, if you don't have After Effects, um, not a huge deal. It's great that we have this type of functionality built in. It's a good start. It's no replacement for a compositing program, but if we don't need that, um, or if, you know, we're just doing a quick still, you know, this can be good enough. What I typically do if I do decide to use magic bullet looks inside of After Effects is I will save out a look, okay? That's very easy to do. After you have one the way you like, you can come down here to save it, tell it where you want to save, name it, and this custom look will now show up in After Effects. So I'm pretty sure Magic Bolt Looks will also work in Premiere, maybe even DaVinci Resolve. Um, and I would like to think the same functionality is there. And so you could either save a custom look out or favorite a look, um, and then it would show up Show up in that category. Would be very easy to apply it once you get into whatever final compositing program um, you were doing. Because that is kind of the problem here is that whatever look we apply is going to get saved into our, our beauty image, our beauty pass. And it's gonna be very hard to make changes after it's been saved into it, okay? But let's do that just so we can see this. So I can go ahead and apply it. And what's kind of cool is you will now see that look applied in a few different areas of Cinema 4D. You will see it in your Redshift render view, okay? right? This is our Redshift render view. It's active. You saw it update. In your settings here, you can control the strength of it and make adjustments to it, all right? Right from here. If we were to switch back to our perspective view, okay, and start our IPR, you may be going, well, where is it? Well, it's there. You just need to toggle it on. Under options, magic bullet looks, okay? And what's nice about this, having it either in your perspective view or, um, Retch a friend review is you can use different cameras, different views, see how the look um, holds up. If there's any adjustments you need to make. Once again, that's kind of a downside is we're, we're locked into whatever we apply to our beauty pass here, but at least you can get a sense of what it's going to look like in an animation from different camera angles before doing that final um, render. So that can be really useful as well. I should also point out though, um, that it's applying the look to the perspective view, not just the render, right? So just like when I was sending this over to Magic Bullet Looks, it pulled over the perspective view. You know, it's applying that Magic Bullet look um, to our perspective view as well as what we render. In your render settings, um, the Redshift Post Effects gets added because that's, you know, essentially what 
um, these settings are considered redshift post effects. All right. Don't quite agree with that, especially for something like Bokeh. Um, but you know, since it is camera specific, okay. Uh, but you also have the magic bolt looks adjustment slider here where you can, you know, make adjustments and, um, decide if you want to save it and keep it. But with that, that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, if you could do me a favor and subscribe and like this video, I'd appreciate that too. Until next time, take care.